Medicine Man here, how you doing? There's been a lot of conversations, uh, both public and private and online, and about fires. And uh, I'm not here to tell you not to have a fire, I'm just gonna tell you some of the dangers. Where we have a problem is when you wanna build a cook fire, and a cook fire is very specific. It's not a bonfire, it's not an entertainment fire, it's a cook fire. What you're trying to do is you're trying to light a fire that's no bigger than six, eight inches around, a small paper plate size, and you're never trying to get the flames any bigger than that. But what your whole goal is, and I'll show this later, this is inside, I, the person who runs the house won't let me light a fire inside. Um, the goal is to make a bed of coals where you can cook with. For the desert spe section especially, and, and, and for everywhere actually, but it's more acute in the desert section. All the plants, all the plant life, all the trees and bushes and scrub you have, they all have huge, what they call a root map. And the root map is... And the root map is how far and how spread out the roots go. Well, the difference in the desert and the difference between you know, subtrop or anywhere else, you know, like up in Washington or Oregon or even Northern California, Sierras, anywhere like that. The difference is the roots are exceedingly dry much of the time, which means that they will catch fire. So if you just light a fire and burn a fire, you could catch a root system on fire. If you catch a root system on fire, it will attract 15, 20, 30 feet to the tree or bush that it's going to and it will burn up the trunk of that bush or tree and turn into a wildlands fire. A lot of fires start that way. I'm sure there's a bunch of more experienced hikers out there that probably have seen the burn tracks on some of these. Um, last year in 2019, oh, there was four or five people that posted a couple of pictures of burn tracks because people didn't bother to put their fire out, number one. Number two, they didn't bother to put it out correctly. And I'm going to show you a dry method to do that that you don't need water with, um, but it's just as effective. Anyway, I'll show you that once I get outside and I do a fire outside. One of the methods, <clears throat> there's many methods to light a fire. You got the magic fire stick, and as was taught to me by a very good friend of mine who has arthritis, these magic fire sticks are kind of hard to work sometimes. So she had the big extended magic fire stick. She could work this better than this. And that's what she brought. Works for me. Me, I used to use matches all the time. This is from, these matches are actually from 1992. I'm gonna see how they work. And you got some emergency fire matches. These light for 20 seconds and you better have everything set up for 20 seconds. I like the ferro rod because you can soak these things into in water all day long and still get a good spark off of them. And they work forever. They don't go bad. Vix can get wet and not work. They can dry out. If these get soaking wet, you can dry them out and they'll work. These you don't have to worry about drying out. You just use them. And I'll demonstrate that too later. For fire starters, you can use your toilet paper, coffee filter, medicine, cotton from a medicine ball or cotton balls. You can buy pre-made fire starters, which uh, basically, they're really cheap. I mean, three or four bucks for a, a box of 10. And you just pull it out and you separate all the fibers and you light it. Once it's spread out, you can light it. You can light it with a ferro rod. I'll demonstrate that. Or you can do homemade where you take a cotton ball, dip it halfway in wax, and you get a five to seven minute burn with a little cotton ball dipped in some wax. And I'm gonna demonstrate this stuff, but this is how you can start a fire real easy. You can do it with grasses and stuff like that, and, but things you have with you in case you have to, coffee filter, nice little cup, and you shoot your sparks into there or you light your back. And truth be told, everybody uses this. I use this quite a bit whenever I'm just Cooking with an isobutane, I use this. This is my backup. 
Okay, what you want to do is you want to take this spine, the back, and you want to make sure that right here and here is 90 degrees. It's basically on this edge is nice and sharp. That way it saves your blade from basically three methods of starting a fire. A couple of I got the magic fire sticks, my Bic, and Scripto. I've got a ferro rod and I've got the stormproof, fireproof matches. Um, I've been using ferro rods so long that I never even try the matches anymore. I had to go buy new ones because my other ones are so old that the sulfur just went bad on them. Bic lighters, everybody's favorite. By far the most convenient. They work all the time and they'll light every time. If it doesn't light, you have your spare that's in a plastic bag. Why in a plastic bag? First time you make a river crossing, everything gets wet, including your Bic. This will light right away. This will take a long time, sometimes days, to relight. Sometimes it takes minutes, but sometimes it just won't light for days because if all that gets soaking wet in there. Anyway, Bic lighters, by far the common. Ferro rods, they'll light everything. Everything here, the ferro rod will light. Okay, what I did is uh, I set up my start of my little twig fire. Remember, I said, it. remember, it's a twig fire. You're just trying to cook your food. You're not trying to light the night. Um, and you um, don't need many mo much more than twigs like this. We need half a dozen or a dozen of these twigs, and that's all you need. What you do is you to light the fire, everybody can stick a bick on there and light a piece of cotton. Not hard. But if you look at it, I got the ferro rod place like this. And that's how fast it lights. The cotton's going. I want to make sure my twig fire is going to go. It's going to burn over that cotton. It'll only take a couple of minutes, to be honest with you. And you got to get your twig started by that time. All that black sooty junk all over it. It's because you're putting it over fire. All the aromatics, all the grease, all that stuff's burning out. The coals, just as hot but no damage and no soot, minimal soot, to the stove. Let this burn down, get it burned down into coals, and once you get it into coals, then you cook your food. Okay, a and little bit of a change is, uh, if you want to buy them pre-made, these pre-made fire starters, they're really great. You just got to take the ends, and you just pull it apart. And all it is, it's pre-impregnated cotton with a some kind of accelerant in it. Go like that, you set it on there, you set your twig fire around it, just like they did on, just like you did on cotton. You set up your twig fire. You set these guys up where it's going to burn. You don't block it off like that, so the sparks won't ever get to it. And you have that all set to go. Again, you have your ferro rod flat. You're not getting anything. You're using the edge to get a spark on the blade. It's already an edge. It just goes. I'll have to fix that. Store-bought, if you've done nothing to it, it's never going to spark. I mean, you scrub on that thing all you want. Flip it around to your edge. Okay? So, in the long run, what's best, a ferro rod or a magic fire stick? Well, yeah, I'm bringing a magic fire stick. This is my backup. If you choose not to bring this... Bring this in a plastic bag as your backup. And make sure both work before you put them in your backpack. But anyway, if you're going to build a fire, you want to do it in a, in a fairly reasonable manner. If you look at, look at all this dead wood on the ground, all these twigs and sticks and stuff. Initially, you think, oh man, that's great firewood. But you have to understand... You have to understand that if this is great firewood, laying on the ground, even in the desert, it will gather moisture. It will be spongy, it will rot faster. Especially if it's been any kind of rain or any kind of moisture. Fog in the morning, mist at night, whatever you want to call it. If it's laying on the ground, it's going to absorb moisture. Okay. If you're looking around for kindling, one of the things you want to look for is if you're going to grab some kindling, say right here if you can grab it and it comes off in your hand easily it's good kindling if it doesn't leave it it's not good kindling 
like maybe here. All oh, that's so dry, it'd be perfect for kindling. Okay, like this. See how that goes? You're looking for tinder. You don't have any grass around, anything like that. You can always look for this. A little tiny plant like that with the tiny buds on it. Yeah, you get that. You get three or four of these. And uh, they work pretty good. Okay, in selecting a place for a fire, you want some place that's going to be secluded. Not so much up into the bush right here. If I set up a fire right there, I would have a very good chance of burning up some roots and starting some roots on fire. So I would go out a little bit more. And what I would do is I would dig through the dirt just a little bit to see if there's any kind of roots going on. See if you find any. And then it's not going to be very... You dig it out to where you know that there's no roots or root system in here. I want to dig that out. This way at least you're going to have a better chance of not starting a ground fire or a root system fire. And you just set it back. If you look and see how that's kicking, there is a little bit of a breeze starting to catch up. You want to be careful of that too. But if you'll notice, it's all burning. There's not a lot of smoke. There's not a lot of anything. But that's because I got everything off of dry sources. If I would have picked this up off the ground, I would have had a lot more smoke. Hopefully you can see the coals starting to build underneath the branches. That's all you need. You don't need much bigger than this. My hand for reference. You don't need much bigger than that. If you let this burn down to just coals, all you have to do is worry about is cleaning up a little bit. You don't get too much buildup on your pot of that sticky crap. Okay, some basic fire things. If you look at the fire, I want it to be like the size of a paper plate. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, this is called banking. If you look around, this is banking the fire. It's when you get everything and you bring it all up into a single point. You pick the center of your fire and you bring it everything in. As you're bringing everything in, what you're doing is you're consolidating the fuel, keeping it all in one spot. You'll slow down the burn actually inside. It'll actually slow down just a bit. And this is almost ready for my pot to put on. And what you do is you slow down the burn and your fuel will last a little bit longer. Banking fires is to preserve a fire. It is not to put it out. You want to bank a fire if you want to keep a fire going. Most everything's coals. Now is a good time. You can set your, fire, set your uh, pot on to start cooking. Doesn't mean let you're into coals. See? And you'll start, whoops, let's not spill it. You just gotta make sure you don't get that too hot. And just let it burn. You wanna continue banking your fire around it. You don't want it going out. You wanna continually feed it with your fuel. And if you notice the sticks, size sticks I used, they were this big. I used a dozen of them maybe. To be fair, this is not the fast way to do it. The fast way to cook your food is with that. I don't know if you can see this. Try to see it. There's actually steam coming up off the water now. To me, that's hot enough to cook anything. You're getting a little micro bubbles in there. It's almost to boiling. Coming off, and it's bent. And you notice the coals. If you have the water, of course, put it out with water. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to put this thing out in the dry method without any water. If you're in the middle of the desert, okay, this is what you're going to want to do. If you got a little bit of flame going or something like this, you're going to want to extinguish it. How do you extinguish it? You spread it out and tap it. You spread this fire out. You spread everything out. You notice there's not a whole lot of coals here. There wasn't a whole lot of wood required to get this thing almost to boiling. If I waited a few minutes, and you tap it. Tap that, okay? Tap it to where it comes out. Use your hand to see where it's hot. 
this is where patience comes in. You have to let this burn out mostly on it. Like five minutes or so. But you can see where I can start touching some of these coals carefully, right? Now it's definitely if I leave it down, leave my hand there, it's gonna burn me because the coals are still active. But it's a lot cooler. And the adage goes, if it's too hot to touch, in other words, leave my hand there, it's too soon to leave. Because if it's hot enough to burn my skin, it's hot enough to reignite. That's the idea. Um, but I'll keep on brushing this out, brushing these around a little bit. Keep on doing this. You don't have to do it all the time. And just open it up. Helps put it out. Okay. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, and look at this. I can pretty much touch almost every part of it now. I'm gonna scrub it off with my fingers. I don't have to worry about burning my fingers. This, even though you're seeing a little bit of smoke come up, this is almost ready to walk away from. Remember, if it's too hot to touch, it's too soon to walk away. A little bit hot spots, a couple of hot spots still. Not really burning, but still hot spots. So I'm gonna wait. Total time has been maybe 10, 12 minutes. And if you look, I can touch everything out here without really, there's hot spots, but nothing that'll burn me terribly. This I'd feel comfortable with finishing, just burying like this, right? You don't bury it completely because that just retains heat. You just go like this. I would feel confident if I left right now because there's no smoke, there's no art, and I can touch every part of it. Remember, if it's too hot to touch, it's too soon to leave because if it's too hot to touch, you can rekindle a fire. I always suggest if you have the water available, use the water and be done with it. That way you know that anything under here is cool. If you dig it under here, look at the steam coming off of the dirt. That's steam. That's, and that's what, that deep from where I was? And it's that dirt right there, the dirt is too hot to touch. The coals are not, because they were sitting on top and they burned away. They cooled off. The dirt, the dirt is steaming. That's how hot it gets down there. That's why you can light roots on fire in the desert so easily. Anyway. Anyway, this video is food for thought. Um, just an exercise in, in, in looking out at what you're gonna be doing. Uh, this is Granite Mountain behind me. That's a permanent home to 19 of 20 uh, wildland firefighters called the Granite Mountain Hotshots. Uh, they perished a few years back, so fire's in the forefront of my mind. That doesn't mean you have a good, don't have a good time. That means you just be careful. Be careful, hike well, and be well.